standing at 6'3 from the University of Kentucky, from Garland, Texas, Tyrese Maxey, Maxey. Tyrese Maxey, welcome back. Thank you for sitting down. And interestingly enough, we're not going to reveal the date at which we shot this, but this is the first time you and I have done a sit down since you've been an all-star. But your energy is the same. How do you keep being who you are despite this meteoric, I'll say that again, meteoric rise that you've had this year? That's a great word. Thank I don't think you. I've ever heard that word before. <laughs> but um, this is who I am, honestly. I mean... Life doesn't change. I mean, it's a blessing to have, have all these things and the meteor. Say that word again. Meteoric. Meteoric. All that <laughs> is amazing. But uh, you know, my I'm, I'm blessed to live this life. I'm blessed to be here. I'm happy to be here. And honestly, I'm just taking it day by day and trying to continue to get better and be the best version of Tyrese. You said something interesting um, right after the trade deadline. You told the story of coming in. You had lost a couple teammates and gained a couple teammates, but maybe they weren't in the building yet. You said you wanted to be the one that helps set a culture. You weren't playing in the game, but you came in and you wanted to talk to the guys. Can you take us through that story and why the idea of setting a culture is so important to you? Yeah, for me, honestly, I just, once we made some trades and I started thinking, honestly, I knew Joel wouldn't be playing um, because he was hurt. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking like, man, I'm like the longest, like I've been here the longest other than Joel and Tobias. And then like me and Piri came in together. so. I think it's just time for like myself to try to step up and, and you know really establish a, a real culture here and establish something that you know anytime somebody gets traded or anytime someone comes in for free agent wherever however it works um, you know we welcome them with open arms and you make them feel welcome and we you let them know that here we're going to work extremely hard we're going to go out there and compete every single night no matter who's on the floor and uh, our ultimate goal is to expect to win so I just wanted to be the first one to be there to to meet them and talk to them and kind of just bring the team together for this for this last stretch. The Tyrese Maxey leadership era appears to have begun. Yeah, Tyrese Maxey old man era. Old man era. <laughs> old man era is hilarious. But let's do some um, fun questions. How about? Ready? I'm ready. New questions and new answers. New questions, new answers. What's the best part of your job? The best part of my job? <sighs> I think I'll give you two answers to that one. Uh, number one is just coming in here every single day and like just being blessed to be in this type of establishment with all these like wonderful people like the people that like the, the people of the sixth organization we're family now you know we see each other every single day and it's amazing like what everybody does what you do with what Elton brand does what Darren Moore does what the players do what coach nurse does with all the media all admin like it's amazing to see and it's it's like a well ran machine so I'm glad to be a part of that and then just going out there and trying to be the best version of myself um, and inspire kids inspire like uh, just people out there and you know, this is something that I dreamed of doing and going out there competing every single night trying to win games and be the best version of Tyrese. What was your favorite subject in school? Oh I liked math I liked math because I just liked like adding and doing stuff like that on the fly it was cool, pretty cool. A lot of people didn't like that, and I was good at it. So, you know, I like being good at things and better than other people, so I was good at that. And then I'll probably say history, some history. Like like American history is pretty cool. Texas history was kind of cool. Like to have Texas your, history was tough. Texas history was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to lie. And, like, just learning about, like, Sacagawea and all those people, that was all it. What about least favorite subject? Ugh. Probably English. Probably English. I didn't really like writing a whole bunch of essays and stuff. I think I was pretty good at communicating, so I don't know. Probably that. Tyrese, you're hosting a dinner. Four guests. Anyone. Dead, alive, people you know, people you don't know. Who's sitting at the table? I was about to say, when am I hosting this dinner? I, I thought you. Were I thought you were, no, no, I thought you were telling me I was hosting <laughs> a dinner. I was about to say, wait, what? They didn't tell me this. Um, it's an imaginary fairy tale dinner, and it's tomorrow. I got you. I got you. I'm going to say... You said dead or alive, right? Okay. Say Barack Obama, Martin Luther King. I want my dad there because he would know how to start a conversation with all these people. And then. He's not intimidated. No, he's not intimidated by nothing. Awesome. 
Barack Obama, Martin Luther King, my dad. Either Rosa Parks or Oprah Winfrey. Wow. Good table. That's a great table. That's a really good I'm table. I'm taking myself off that table. I'll just let them talk, and I'm gonna, I want to hear what they have to say about it. What are you guys going to eat? We'll probably eat, like, pasta. Eat some pasta, something with a fork. I was going to say wings, but then, like, if you're eating wings, your hand's going to get all messy. You don't want to get your hands messy with, you know, Oprah right there. You want to be able to be classy with my fork. Respectful. And, you know what I mean? You, she's a legend. Yeah. Tyrese, what's something that scares you? What scares me? I think... I don't fear a lot of things. I think my biggest fear is uh, not maximizing my potential, not being the best version of myself. And that's why I work extremely hard because I don't like, well, you know, failure comes with it, but I want to be successful. You know what I mean? I want to be able to go out there and try my hardest and say I was able to, you know, I put in all the work that I could to be the best version of, of, of Tyrese Maxey. And that's my goal always. What's the best gift you've ever received? The gift of life. Shout out to your mom. Shout out to my mom. What's the best gift you've ever given? Whew, this is a good one. I don't know. I don't know this one. I think, I think the get, uh, ooh, I'm going to say opportunity. Hmm. Opportunity, like, like my best friend works with me. My uncle works with me. Uh, my mom, my dad, you know, my mom was able to retire. My dad was able to retire, so they work with me. So I think my grandmother, it's all great. Like, I have, like, a family-oriented business, and I think opportunity is great. And, you know, my having my best friend with me every single day and him working and him just growing as a human being has been great. He had a first real job before you did, I guess. No, nah, I had a real job in uh, high school. Oh, correct me. Was that high school? What did you school? do? I used to, um, I used to take... I used to work at this, like a sports center, uh -huh. you know, like where you go and play basketball and stuff. So I used to do like did, front desk. I did the cash register. Nice. And then I did like I did scores table. So like I took the stat sheet and stuff like that. That was great. That was pretty cool. I did that like Thursdays and Wednesdays or something like that. I can't remember the actual dates, but I actually got a check for it too. I remember that. That was lit. I love that for you. No, I apologize lit. for the disrespect. You've had multiple jobs. Yep. A man of many talents, Tyrese, rapid fire round, okay? No thinking, just answer. Favorite superhero? Spider-Man. If you didn't play basketball, you'd play? Sport? Yeah. Tennis. If you were a DJ, your DJ name would be? DJ Max, cut the beat. Okay. Or DJ Reese. I don't know. DJ T-Max. DJ T-Max. DJ T-Max. Like, but that sounds kind of like TJ Max. Man, th DJ T-Max. DJ TJ Max. Okay, great. <laughs> Tyree's favorite place to visit. Mm, I'm gonna say my mom's house now, cause I, I don't stay there. I just visit. I get to the, hey mama, hey grandma. I I get to go home. <laughs> place you wish to visit? Uh, Africa. Vet who made the biggest impact on you as a young player? I'll say Joel and Tobias. Actor who would play you in a movie? Dance from Idris from Snowfall. Favorite time of day? Morning. Like Early. a number on the clock, though? Like Probably like 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Which teammate would you bring to an important family dinner? <laughs> uh, Tobias. Tobias or Joe. What's your favorite jersey color of your Sixers jerseys? Walk mm. in the locker room, you're excited to see? Red. No, no, blue, 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 blue. Navy or blue? No, blue, no, no, classic blue. Classic blue. What do your teammates and coaches call you? They call me all type of things. The Max, some call me Reese, some call me Tyrese. Um, Joel doesn't have a name for me, just says A when he wants the ball. <laughs> well, Max. Reese, Tyrese, A. A. Thank you so much for sitting down. Yep, thank you. Starting at shooting guard, 6'6", six, six, from Durham, North Carolina. Attended the University of Arkansas. Ricky, counsel, the fourth. Welcome back to the 76ers Insiders podcast. Matt Murphy joined by Ricky Council, the fourth, a Sixers rookie. Thanks for taking some time, Ricky. And just the adjustment to, to life in the NBA. What? What has it been like for you this year, your, your first NBA season? Has it been kind of a whirlwind? I mean, at times, I mean, being a two-way player, I've heard is 
probably the hardest job in NBA, just being down with the coats and then getting caught up. It can happen in a matter of hours. It can happen a day before. You just never know. Um, it's been pretty smooth lately because I've been with them pretty much the whole new year. But, yeah, it, it can get tough at times, but you always got to stay mentally ready and mentally prepared. So, you know, it, it's been good, though. What has this recent stretch been like near the All-Star break where you're a regular in, in the rotation for most Sixers NBA games and the fans have really gravitated towards you as well? How has, how has it been? I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, I don't even think I had a time to, like, sit back and realize how, 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 how good I'm doing, honestly. I mean, from being undrafted to playing most of my games in the G League, to playing my first NBA game, to scoring my first NBA free throw, to now, like you said, getting a regular rotation minutes. I mean, it's just happened so fast. So, I mean, I feel like I, when I do get time to think about it, probably what happened after the season, I'll be proud of myself. But right now, I'm just in the moment. And you eventually did get the game ball from Joel Embiid. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I your did, guy, Terquavion Smith, you both, mm -hmm. you know, scored your first points. But yeah, I, I thought I was going to get it that game. Terquavion wanted to go out and, and hit five threes in a row, so it's all good. I know you haven't had that many NBA road trips yet, but is there a certain city that you looked forward to most that you've already been to or one coming up, a road trip that you're looking forward to most? I was looking forward to the Charlotte one because that's, that's home, even though it happened so fast. Actually, that was my first road trip. Because I, <laughs> I think they told us the day we went to Orlando that we was going to Orlando. Like, we was literally in Delaware chilling. And it was like, yeah, come on. <laughs> We're like, what? So we had to pack bags, drive down. We missed a whole practice, came came up, and then got on the flight. And so I didn't even get the time to tell everybody. So it just happened so quick. And then looking forward to uh, this L.A. trip. This L.A. trip, Phoenix, the West Coast trip, I should call it. Life of a two-way contract player, when you do have to scramble to pack in a moment like that, is there a certain pair of shoes or something you need for the games that you're going to first to make sure you have, regardless of anything else in the suitcase? Well, forget the clothes. I don't really be putting it on like that anyway for <laughs> to, like, walk through or stuff. But things I need, my toothbrush, my lotion, things like that, my speaker and headphones and charger. That's the things I like, yeah. Let me put that in the bag first before I walk out and forget it. Um, as far as shoes, I don't, like I said, I don't really trip too much on that. I might put my my um, Travis Scott's, the black ones, to go with anything and then. And the game shoes might be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, no, the game shoes, yeah, they gotcha. already take care of all that, so I'm not, that's the easy part. This year with the Sixers, there's been all these high-scoring games. I mean, Tyrese has two 50-point games. Joel Embiid has a 70-point game against the Spurs. Has there been a, a favorite 76ers memory, just watching your, your teammates or something that's happened so far this year that's been your favorite? Um, trying to get some of the games I was most hype about. The 70-point game, like, that's, that's crazy. I'm on a bench, like... Seeing 68, 65, really even 50 on the, when you look up at the jungle trying to seeing that beside somebody's name is crazy. But then when you saw a 70, it's like, that's insane. And then Reese's two 50-point games. I mean, I'm hype every game if, if y'all see it or not, but I mean, those three for sure. Yeah. If you could have a skill from one of your teammates on the court, what would you want to add to your game? skill I want to add I would say hmm I would say surprisingly I would say melts um defensive sneakiness and instincts is there a skill or a hobby off the court that you want to not from a specific teammate but something you would like to be able to do or, or learn away from the game of basketball? Mm. All basketball all the time? Yeah, literally. I'm telling you. I don't, I don't do too much outside of basketball. I go straight home. I feel like your answer to this might be 
Terquavion because you guys travel a lot together. So maybe take him out of the equation. Who are you closest with on the Sixers team? Um, Paul. <laughs> Why? I mean, that's probably who I talked to. The and Tyrese, I've been talking to him a lot more lately. Um, I, I mean, like I, like I said, I, I tell you all the time, I really stay out the way. Like, my job as a rookie, do I need to do? Get out, stay out the way, don't do too much. Like, I mean, somebody want to take me under their wing, which I feel like Tyrese and some of those guys have. So I wouldn't, wouldn't really call us, like, outside friends, but, you know, they're cool people. What was your favorite subject when you were in school? Gym class. <laughs> Gym class. <laughs> Least favorite? Least favorite. Oh, easy. Chemistry. Is that like junior year of high uh, school? Junior, junior year. That was like the one science class. I was like, first of all, I'm not ever going to need this. And it was super hard, like <laughs> crazy like, hard. You got through it. <laughs> You're I, actually, I actually got lucky. Our teacher just <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> we was watching movies the rest of the year. That's funny. Cause I had a and we didn't have to take the, uh, what's my call it, the exam. I remember in a physics class, the whole project was to build a roller coaster throughout the whole semester. And uh -huh. then all of a sudden they were like, we're going to let the seniors out, graduate early or stop classes early before graduation. So that roller coaster project, if you did it, great. If you didn't do it yet, like you're good to go. And I was like sweating this roller coaster project yeah. for physics and we never had to do it. So Lucky you. For worked real. out we for both, both of us. Lucky. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Um, I don't know if you've had any of these gifts yet, but like, what's your, if you have one, a favorite gift that you've gotten for someone else? So, like, that you've On bought for someone else? No, just oh. just in in life. Favorite gift that you've ever given to someone? <sighs> or received, or received. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm not a big gift giver yet. Maybe in the near future, because mm -hmm. I'm actually getting a little money now. Uh, favorite gift I received may have to be this right here. Bracelet? Simple. It's a bracelet. It's my mom gave it to me on Christmas. We didn't really do gifts, gift exchanging growing up. Uh, she gave it to me this Christmas, and I never take it off except for games and practice. Every time I take it off, I kiss it twice, think about her. And yeah, I love it. Never it says Ricky Four, six is number sixteen. Simple. Love That's it. That's special. Mm -hmm. I know it, it was special for you to make the NBA in a basketball family where your siblings all played at a high level. How are they following along with your career? Watching on TV? Have they been to any home or road games? Yes. Um, Listening on the radio. <laughs> yeah, they're TV. they're in tune for sure. I Social was, media? Yeah. I was blessed to um, be with the Sixers because my brother's right down in Baltimore, so he's pretty much at every home game. Um, I imagine that was good for the Blue Coats games. Too. Yeah, yeah, that too, even closer. Um, sister, she came to the Charlotte game. Middle brother still haven't been to a game, but he should be soon, probably in the next two weeks. Dream dinner table. You plus four guests could be anybody in history. You get four spots. Who would you want surrounding you at a at a dinner? Surrounding me at a dinner. I'm going to say Michael Jordan went easy. Now it's coming back to me that you answered this at Summer League with me. I did. So we'll see if you go with the same answers. Yeah, let's see. I say Michael Jordan. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Kevin Durant, and then I'm going to try to get away from basketball because those are my two favorite ever basketball players. I'm going to say Lil Baby, <laughs> and I'm going to say, hmm, Kevin Hart. A little bit different than the last time. I think yeah, you had Beyonce or Rihanna. Yeah, I was about, I was, I was about to say time. Beyonce, actually. but I was. You didn't like, have Durant in there. 
yeah, I just did I you get to suit that. up across from Durant this year against Phoenix? I mean, no, I didn't. I was with the G League and we was on the way back and I was trying to make it, but it was too late. All right. We're going to do some rapid fire questions here. We'll do it. Favorite superhero? Spider-Man. I thought you were going to say yourself because you added yourself to the Marvel characters in the <laughs> arena video. I had to get one more up. <laughs> if you didn't play basketball, what sport would you play? Track, high jump, never lose. What would your DJ name be? <laughs> DJ Rick. Who's the vet that's made the biggest impact on you so far? Um, Tyrese and... Tyrese, this is rapid fire. My bad. You're good. <laughs> Mo was giving us elaborate answers for this. <laughs> <laughs> or he was elaborating on them. Favorite place to visit? Miami, for now. Place you wish to visit someday? Turks. Actor who would play you in a movie? Who would play me? <laughs> uh, the Rock. What's your favorite time of day? Um, of day. Like specific time. <laughs> I say like five. Five. PM? Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems like you're in the gym at five AM probably. So Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that might be Tyrese though. Yeah, that's definitely it. <laughs> and you stay late. What is your favorite color Sixers uniform? Red. Easy. Why is that easy? I don't know. It's just, it looks really good. And your college was red ish. At your, at yeah, Arkansas. but this is like a bright red and it really pops with the blue and the white. It's nice. Which Sixers teammate would you bring to an important family dinner? Tobias. Why is that? His Super presence? professional. Ask the right questions, be respectful, all that. Not like anybody else would, but it's first off my top. And then finally, what do your coaches and teammates call you in games and practices? Uh, Ricky, Rick, C4. Um, yeah, that's the ones I hear the most. All right, Ricky Council the fourth, C4. Thanks so much for <laughs> joining us on the Sixers Insiders podcast. No, thank you all for having me. Think six eight from France. Boom boom. Nico Batum. Nico Batum, welcome to the 76ers Insiders Podcast. Thank, Thank you. you for sitting down with us. Thank you. I want to start here. Mm -hmm. How did you become such a good inbounder? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I've been doing that for a very long time. I've been put in this situation for a while. I mean, I've been in the NBA for like 16 years now. And uh, I think I've been doing that since my second or third year, like big game situations. So I kind of used to it now, like playoff games, like clay game under pressure. And I'm pretty much used to it now. 16 years. Yes. What's the biggest change you've seen in the NBA from when you started until now? I mean, when, when I stopped playing, there was like two legit big men, like in the starting lineup. Yeah. You, you needed two seven footer, mm -hmm. like in this state inside to to play the game and now it's just pretty much four guards and one big now we, sometimes you're the, the big man sometimes i'm the big man and sometimes the big man play point guard like a point forward it used to be a point for a nice point center now so yeah a lot of change in 15 years eh, still a great basketball i love asking international players mm -hmm. this question what do you think the biggest difference between guys that grew up playing in the states and guys that grew up playing internationally is I think the way you, they're teaching you the game of basketball. I mean, I, the way I was when I was younger, like the way they would teach me the game and the way I play. Like when I see, like for example, my son, like when I go to his practice, he's seven years old and the way like he's being taught the game is totally different, you know? And but I don't know, like, because we grew up, I mean, we play against pros and grown men very early. We don't really do the, the college system on the high school stuff, we don't really do it the same way. So when we come in, we we kind of know to play the game. We, I mean, physically, they're way better here. No, they're pesting, like the crazy, crazy stuff, right? They're stronger, they're more physical, they may, they may be more, like, more athletic for sure. But when we come in, like we've been through like, okay, we know how to play the game of basketball, we just need to match the intensity and the physical part of here. 
what's something that your son is learning that you didn't learn or something you watch him learn and you're like, whoa, 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 he doesn't need to do that. No, I mean, the, the way, I mean, he's doing stuff like, like I didn't know how to do that when I was seven, eight years old. So it's positive. Yeah, some stuff. Okay. I'm just scared sometimes, like, can miss some steps. Like, on the, doing like his, like the way he play, he will run the game. But, I mean, he's too young. He's having fun, so I don't really care about it right now. Good parenting. Yeah. When you think about you're 16 in the NBA, mm -hmm. Philadelphia 76ers, what's the best part of your job right now? I'm in the NBA. I mean, I'm a basketball player in the NBA. I, I realize the chance I have, like, you know, we've been there so long. I know I'm not an all-famer, I'm not an all-star or whatever, but I'm still 16 years in this league and still playing, and I'm playing time for a very good team. And you know, it's funny because when I'm still on the court, sometimes I see on the coaching staff, guy who were drafting, like, the same years as me, or after me, like I would draft it after me and I didn't coaching staff or do whatever stuff and I'm still playing. I'm like, yeah, maybe I, I done something right. You shared something with me when we were in Chicago. You talked about having a really good time with this team and mm -hmm. enjoying the energy that's here. Um, what's the best part of, of this team? You know, like, and especially right now, you know, we're going, we're going through tough times and uh, because we missed your best player and we sticking together no matter what and that that's the good the good part of this team i mean you can't have easily guys like pointing fingers finding excuses or just everybody go to his own way like i'm the hero whatever no no we even if it's tough right now we're still sticking together no we're going to work every day we're going to try to find a way to be successful and we're going to be okay take me back to young nico mm -hmm. what was your favorite subject in school math what was your least favorite subject in school? French, actually. Really? It's French is tough. I believe it. I can't speak French. French? No. no. Can you? No, uh -huh. I said I can't. Uh -huh. No, French is not easy, though. I, I, no, it's very, very tough. Beautiful language, though. It is. I like listening to people speak French. It, it Aesthetically, is. much more pleasing than English, right? <laughs> I'm French, so I don't really understand that, Fair actually. Enough. People like, I heard a lot of people say that pretty much French is language of love. I'm like, you should really learn her. Like, when we talk, like, I don't think it's a... It's the language of hate. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But no, I mean, French is tough. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't really good in French in school. You're hosting a dinner party, a mm -hmm. hypothetical dinner party, tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. You can have four guests, mm -hmm. dead or alive, people you know, people you don't know. Who do you invite to the table? Oof. My dad. I lost my dad when I was three years old, so my dad, for sure. It's a great answer. Uh... Oof. MJ. I want to know, like. Which one? Both, actually. Oh. Why not? Okay. Both, yeah, that's a good one. Both, actually. And uh, Nessa Mandela. Great table. Yeah. What are you guys going to eat? French food. French and African food. Awesome. Hmm. What's something that scares you? Oof. Being a dad now changed everything for me. I got two kids. We got two kids, so I got a boy seven year old and a daughter three year old. So now, anything happened to them? Yes. What's the best gift you've ever given someone? Ooh. Did I give it to someone? Best gift. You know, when you got a chance to be successful and buy a house to your own family. And make sure like your wife and kids like are set and you okay, they're okay. I mean, I think I've done my job. I think that's a gift I've made to them. It's fantastic. Yeah. What's the best gift you've ever received? My two kids. These um, are good answers. These are no, meaningful. I, I, I'm dead serious. Like, you know, when before like you became like a family guy and, mm -hmm. and a dad, you don't really understand what life is. And since we have those, our family and my wife, that gave me those two kids. I mean, this is the best gift I ever had, for sure. Who are you closest to on this team? Joel. I mean, Joel and I have known each other for a while now. Uh, I mean, I, I met him before mm -hmm. he got drafted, too. Like, he was skinny and young. And cause we were the same roots, you know. He's from Cameroon, my dad from Cameroon, my old dad side, and my name from Cameroon. So we have that connection. We both speak French, so yeah, Joel. Okay, rapid fire round. No thinking. 
Just answers. Okay. Ready? Yes. Who's your favorite superhero? Batman. If you didn't play basketball, what would you play? Tennis player. What would your DJ name be? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good one. And uh, where would you be DJing? Like south of France, probably? South of France, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Why, my, uh, my DJ name? Oh. I don't know. DJ Nico. Keep it simple. Fair enough. Yeah. Branding is easier if you're exactly. just DJ Nico. That's fair. Mm. Who's the vet that made the biggest impact on you when you were young in your career? Brandon Roy. Favorite place to visit? France. Somewhere you've never visited but wish to? Australia. Actor who would play you in a movie? Will Smith. Favorite time of day? Morning. But like specifically what time on the clock? Well, let's say 7 a.m. What's your favorite color Sixers uniform? Red. You walk into the locker room, you see red, and you're like, eh. Yeah. I <laughs> wish it would bring the black one 2001 back. Those are tough. Oh, the Fan favorite. One. I mean, that was my favorite one. If you had to bring a teammate to a family dinner, who would you bring? Not Joel. Not Joel here. He's the only one speaking French. So. Oh, so he just fits in at the table. Exactly. It's just yeah, more yeah. efficient. I got you. <laughs> What do your coaches and teammates call you? Nico. Nico? Yeah, everybody call me Nico. Nico, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Mo Bamba, welcome to the 76ers Insiders podcast. Thank you, thank you. Great to have you. And we talk about the, the schedule in the NBA, including a game day, but the travel days. When it's a travel day, what city in the league do you look forward to going to most? Um, I got to think. This year has definitely been Orlando, um, just because I'm familiar with the city. I've been there five years. Um, just kind of knew the ins and outs of the city. Um, and it was just great to get back to in the middle of December because of the, the warm weather. You got to play in one of the two games there? Yep. Yeah, I got nice. to play in one of the two games there. It was a great uh, game. We ended up winning. We won both times down there, which felt really good. But uh, the one that I played in was, uh, it was the first game back, and that one, that one felt really good. And then on an off day, describe your perfect off day. Um, my perfect off day would probably wake up like around, get a nice little sleep in, like around 10, 10.30, um, wake up, uh, have a nice little egg sandwich with some butter, toasted, toasted white bread with some buttered, you know, some butter in there, um, egg and cheese sandwich. Uh, get to the gym, get a nice little workout, nice little sweat in. Um, get treatment, get a massage, come back home, chill basically most of the day. Um, maybe do another treatment session in there, maybe a little PT, um, depending on what I got going on. But other than that, home, video games, chill. What, what video games? Uh, I've been playing a little 2K lately. I've been playing Madden um, a good amount lately. Um, so more little, of a sports gamer? Yeah, more of a sports gamer. A little bit of Fortnite since they came back with the old season, but uh, that'll be, those are the three games. Your background, New York, the greater Philadelphia area mm -hmm. as well. So you were, you saw the NBA from a, a distance and some of these local teams, mm -hmm. but since you've been in the league, is there anything that would surprise fans about life in the NBA or that surprised you? Yeah, um... Depending on who you are, obviously, and you know your family. Um, some guys are married, some guys are, you know, single bachelors or whatever. But it's a lot of free time on your hands, um, especially like after practice, um, you, you get a lot of free time. But one thing that might surprise a lot of people um, is just how much of the day like practice may take, you know. And then it's a lot of free time. But um, for practice, practice will start at like 11, 12 o'clock. Like you're getting in the gym. You're getting at the practice facility at probably like nine. Like today, I got in at eight forty-five, um, and then you go through like your routine, and you know you shoot, you lift, you go through treatment, um, you do film, you do a whole bunch of stuff. So it's like kind of like a you know five six hour day, depending on you know how you who you are and how you spend it. But um, other than that, it's, it's a lot of free time. And your prep basketball at the West Town School, you were near the Sixers at that time. Mm -hmm. So now that you're a first year 76er. Mm -hmm. What's been your best memory so far this season? I remember, um, I think it was like my senior year or junior year, um, Daniel Chafer, who's a Villanova legend, 
Um, he played a preseason game uh, against the Sixers. Um, and I remember, I think KO was on that team. He was like a rookie. Kylo Quinn? No, 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 KO. Oh, <laughs> Kelly, Kelly Oubre. Kelly Oubre. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought yeah. you meant the Sixers team. No, 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 gotcha. Kelly Oubre was a, he was a rookie, I believe. Um, and and another memory I actually have was uh, the first NBA floor I actually like got to like shoot around and play on was the Sixers floor at the Wells Fargo uh, Center. Um, it was like a workout and random day in the middle of the summer. One of our coaches hit me up and he was like, hey, like um, we're renting out. Uh, we got access to the Sixers floor. And I remember driving like two hours from New York because I was just so excited to just be out there on the NBA floor. Um, I'll find a picture if you guys want it, but it was that was a really cool moment for me. That is a very cool moment indeed. And for time purposes, we're going to do our rapid fire okay. round here. Mm -hmm. And other guys have had more time to think about this dinner table question, but we're going to group it into the rapid fire. So you plus four guests, mm -hmm. what's your dream dinner table? Oof. All right. Um, definitely got to have Barack Obama in there. Um, that's that's one of the. I don't really get starstruck anymore because I feel like I've met everyone I needed, you know, wanted to ever meet. Um, but Barack Obama was one of those one of those guys, one of those people who I, I would love to just sit down and just have a chat with. Um, and then the other three could be anybody. You know, I might throw in Kevin Hart because he's. Not only is he funny, but he's actually very smart, very worldly. Um, you know, he's been around the block, you know, everywhere in the world. So um, he'd be a cool guy to just, you know, talk to and get some stories from. Uh, um, and then it could be anybody. Let Kevin Hart that. pick the other. Yeah, I'll let two. Kevin Hart bring in some, some uh, Who's celebrity your guests. Favorite superhero? Favorite superhero will probably be Black Panther. If you didn't play basketball, what sport would you play? Uh, tennis, maybe. What would your DJ name be? Just DJ Mo Bamba. <laughs> the vet who made the biggest impact on you as a young player. Um, right now it's probably, probably Tobias, because um, I mean I've known him before, before coming to the Sixers. Um, I remember sitting down with him. He lived right upstairs from me in Orlando. I remember sitting down with him right before, um, I think my fourth year, and he was just telling me like, Yo, you gotta bring it this year. You know, I mean, we were just sitting there chatting and talking about a whole bunch of different stuff, but um, um, he's been really impactful, just different stuff, even off the court, like, you know, financial stuff, um, you know, how to manage stress, expectations, all of that. Um, he's been a really, really good vet for me. What's your favorite place to visit? There's a little small village in the south of France named St. Basil. Um, I went down there with uh, my girlfriend's family, and it was it was a great trip. You know, it's not really much to do there, but it was very it was warm. It's very scenic. Um, we were like kind of in the valley. Um, great trip. What's a place that you would wish to visit someday? Uh, probably like Bali. Like in like that little somewhere, you know, those islands in the Far East right over Australia. I think that's somewhere where I want to go. This needs to be a specific time, but favorite time of day? Man, probably like around 2 o'clock. Favorite color Sixers uniform? <laughs> the navy or the red? A lot of red because I think wearing it has impacted decisions yeah, yeah. today. Which teammate would you bring with you to an important family dinner? None of them. And maybe, maybe Tobias, maybe. And finally, what do your coaches and teammates call you? Mo. All right, Mo. Just Mo. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate, <laughs> Appreciate it. it man. Thank you. Thanks. From Memphis, Tennessee, 6-2 campaign. Went to Mary State. Everybody give it up for C. Payne. <laughs> AKA Turbo. Jumping in with this, the NBA schedule, there's the game day, of course, travel days, mm -hmm. off days. When it comes to, I mean, we used to ask about game day, but everyone's looking forward to the game then. So on a travel day, what do you look forward to and what city in particular do you look forward to traveling to most and why? Uh, uh, I'll probably say I like, outside of going home, I'm from Memphis. Uh, outside of going to the Grizzlies game, I like going back to Phoenix, places that I've played. 
Um, normal, regular old game day. I mean, travel day for me is pretty much uh, trying to get back to the city as quick as I can. Uh, when I land, I try to get that massage in. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's a long flight. Uh, so I try to get a massage in once I land. Um, and then, man, see family and friends. Uh, make sure I get a good good dinner and uh, go to sleep at a decent time. Might get on the game, try to fall asleep. Uh, but outside of that, just try to get in the bed in a decent time. What's the video game for you? Call of Duty for sure. Uh, or Madden. You can catch me on Madden too, but Call of Duty. I don't know. Um, kind of get my heart racing a little bit, but bring it down when it's time to get some rest. Have you played Call of Duty or any other game with Tyrese or DeAnthony yet? <laughs> nah, not yet, but I heard uh, all, ever since I've been here, I heard they talking crazy about Call of Duty. They they talk about the game, like they all play the game together, so I'm going to fill myself in soon. Who talks about it the most? Um, I'll probably say Tyrese and B-Ball Paul. Uh, They've been, they been talking about it heavy. Uh, I was like, I'm going to get in there soon. Uh, but I'm still trying to set up my crib. Man, hotel Wi-Fi, not like at the, at the house Wi-Fi. So they're going to be looking at me like I'm weak. So I got to wait. I got to wait till I give me a little crib and give me some good internet. Or you could start now, and then if you lose, blame it on the hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> blame it on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, <laughs> just a tip there. When it comes to an off day, describe your what would be your perfect off day. Ooh, perfect off day. Um, wake up in the morning, get some breakfast with wifey. Um Probably get on the call with with, with, with Pops and, and Mom for a little bit. They love talking basketball. Um, probably go get in the gym after. Um, off days aren't really off days. You still got to keep the game tuned up. Uh, so probably sneak into the gym for like an hour. Um, and then get a lot of treatment. Uh, probably do cold tub, hot tub. Um, try to find a way to get a massage in. Um, but get some food. My mom off days are big on food and video games. So after I get done with that, it's food, video games for four or five hours, six hours. <laughs> then may go back to the gym, may not. Um, but it's really all just spending time with the wifey and the missus, um, just chilling. I got my dog, spend a lot of time with him. He misses me a lot because uh, I'm on the road all the time. What kind and, of dog? Oh, Frenchie. Nice. Frenchie, his name Uno. His name Uno, if y'all ever see him on my IG. Um, I try to spend as much time with him as I can when I'm not around. I mean, when I am around, because when I'm, man, on the road, he be sad. As soon as I wake up, like, I got to go, he be sad. I got to go to the game, he get sad. So huh. any opportunity I get to, like, spend time with him, um, I try to I try to get as much sleep with him as I can, try to play with him as much as I can, because I be gone all the time. Even with the trade stuff, I had to leave him, leave him in Milwaukee. I've been gone from him for like two weeks. When I seen him, you know, he was super happy, super geeked up. So I don't know. Every time I leave him, man, it hurts a lot, and I be missing my mans. Uh, but that's pretty much it, man. Uh, spend, spending time at the crib a lot, uh, what I do on my off days. Shout out to Uno. Shout out to Big Uno, straight up. Y'all see him on my IG, say what's up. Speaking of the trade, I know you haven't been in a Sixers uniform all that long yet, mm -hmm. but what is a best memory or two from this season so far in, in your short time with the Sixers? Ooh, between the Atlanta game, I probably wouldn't say Atlanta game, but that was a, that was, Pat Bell told me to take my physical, and I was hot <laughs> about that, and I couldn't respond. I didn't want to go in the back and forth on Twitter. Um, so I had to wait until after the game. That was the only way I feel like I could get my lick back, you know, play the game and see how the game go. Um, wish we would have won that game. So I say Cleveland for sure. I go at Cleveland. That's my best memory. Cleveland game. Felt like I was hooping a little bit. I made some shots for us, help us rally to get a win. That first game when we talk about physical gate with mm -hmm. Pat Bev calling mm -hmm. you out on social media, but the first game was in front of the, the home crowd. Yeah. How did they receive you? What was that like? Honestly, I feel like it was they they received me great. I feel like it was optimistic though. They didn't know what to expect from me, and uh, I feel like I stepped to the plate and gave them a little sum of uh, what they could see in the future. So uh, I think I think that was all cool. That was that was good. I feel like they embracing me uh, with open arms. I just got to keep doing my part, keep hooping. Who are you closest with on this Sixers team? On this team, I'd probably say Kelly. We got drafted together. I kind of knew him before um, before I got to Philly, even even before I got to, to Phoenix. Uh, 
like I said, we got drafted together and we kind of hung out a lot. But once I went to my team, went to his team, kind of lost touch a little bit. But now I'm back in Philly. Uh, it was easy right away. Like, my guy, KO, was good, was good. Uh, so, like, that's my man's right now. I know I've known Paul for a little second, too. When I when I played in Chicago, he was at DePaul. We worked out together, not, not even knowing he was about to be in the NBA. So, on the first day, I seen him in the locker room. We sit beside each other. He was like, what's good, man? I remember we used to uh, have a little fun back in Chicago. You remember me? I'm like, of course I remember you. I ain't think you was about to take off like that, but let's get it. <laughs> he know my energy. He know how, how I am. So, like, that was cool to see Paul in there, too. So before we wrap up with a rapid fire round, mm -hmm. your dream dinner table, you plus four other people, <clears throat> who's at your dream dinner table? Um, we going Michael Jordan for show. Sure. We going Kobe Bryant for show. Sure. Them two for show. Sure. Do I count in the four? You plus four other. So you got two All right, more. So I get two more. Kobe and Mike, they there. Um, let's get let's get Barack in there. I just want to see that vibe, um, and, and and I mean we can bring Drake along. I feel like that's a cool little vibe. That's a cool little vibe for dinner. A lot of info to take in, uh, a lot of history to take in, a lot of ghosts, a lot of ghosts, a lot of information. Like that'll be a cool dinner table for me. We Rap get to hit all areas. Absolutely, rapid fire round with mm -hmm. campaign. Favorite superhero? Spider Man. If you didn't play basketball, what sport would you play? Uh, probably football. Your DJ name? <laughs> DJ Turbo. If you didn't know, now you know. The vet who made the biggest impact on you as a young player? Chris Paul. Favorite place to visit? Uh, Miami. Place you wish to visit someday? Dubai. Actor who would play you in a movie? Uh, Cleo Thomas. What's your favorite color Sixers uniform? Oh, I like the red. <laughs> favorite time of day, a specific time? Ooh, I like 2 o'clock. We'll talk about why at some other <laughs> point. But Which teammate would you bring to an important family dinner? Reese, Tyrese Maxey. And then finally, what do your coaches and your teammates call you? Turbo. <laughs> All right, campaign Turbo. Thank you so much. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Buddy Healed. Welcome to the 76ers Insiders Podcast. We're happy to have you. Thank you. Your Sixers tenure has been short so far, but right. what's your favorite memory so far as a 76er? Favorite memory as a 76er so far? I guess getting my first home win mm -hmm. uh, in front of the fans. I feel like there were a couple games where we were close, where we, from the Atlanta game to the Miami Heat game, I was like, man, I just need one to get at home. Eager to get one to, you know, to sort of get the fans something to cheer about, you know, and because uh, home is important, you know, winning home games, uh, you know, where the fans where you, where you where you feel more appreciated, there they come and support out their busy schedules. So I wanted to get that home win for them, and uh, I hate losing home too because you know, especially all you know, the kids are uh, coming in and their families, and uh, I know how fan passionate the fans are. So getting that first one to bend, but under my belt, but like. It sucks when I lose them because I hate disappointing the fans because the fans is what we uh, come to play for, and uh, especially being against the home team, uh, which is us, 76ers fans. Uh, I always try to go out there and give it my all to get a win because getting wins at home is important because they help Bills. You guys are finding ways to win even without the reigning MVP in Joel yeah. Embiid. So when you think down the stretch, whenever he is able to return to the group, how exciting is it to think about the potential that the team has adding a scorer and a defender of that caliber. You know, it's really good. You know, this, you know, the potential is really like you, you can't think about it now until it comes, you know, but uh, yes, we can't wait. A lot of people cannot wait, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I'm excited, you know, uh, I've, I've, I've watched him all my whole life playing basketball. I played against him in Kansas. I watched his game grew tremendously uh, into the MVP, MVP uh, caliber player that he is now. Uh, I'm excited. You know, I see him playing with Indiana. Who he's a double team every time he touches the ball. Like, so I, so I see with all uh, the attention he gets in the court. So uh, hopefully that me, I, myself, Cam, and everybody around Kyle Lowry and then, uh, the guys that so you have Tyrese and Tobias and everybody Kelly, that we can like take more pressure off him, where he be able to work and uh, be able to dominate form as he always was. So let's shift gears just a little bit. Hmm. You're hosting a dinner party tomorrow night. 
it's a hypothetical dinner party. You get four guests, dead or alive, people you know or people you don't mm, know. You can't mess with the dead. Who are you inviting to your dinner? Four people. Four, Anyone. Four people. I can't mess with the dead. I'm not going to lie to you. That's fine. Uh, four people. I'm hosting dinner party. Hmm. It's not. That's not hard. It should not be hard. I'm a fun person. I'm a. I'm gonna bring Vibes Cartel. He's a. He's a reggae artist. Uh. Uh. What else I'll bring? I'll bring. I'll probably bring Drake for sure. He's a detention. He's gonna bring. Get, get everybody there. You can have a good vibe. Uh. Maybe, Jay Z. Okay. Uh. So three musical artists so and, far. Man, Who's I, the fourth? I mean. It's, Cannot you know, as as you cannot mess with the dead too. <laughs> I cannot mess with the dead. But if anybody I bring that is fun, Michael Jordan. There you go. What's the best part of your job? The best part of my job is me coming to here to work every day to something I love to do. Uh, that I'm obsessed with it. You know, just come to the game and just head a basketball bounce, free day at basketball, the point guard, the, I mean the the popcorn at the arena. That's just a breed that era that's not as basketball season, you know? I love that. What's the best gift you've ever given someone? Uh, the best I guess is give my mom a house. Uh, and, and, I, and she had to build her dream house, so that was the best gift that I've given someone. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a big gift giver too, so, uh, but I, really giving my mom her dream house was like the biggest blessings that I, that I would ever like accomplish in life because Everything I do is for her to make sure she's happy, make sure she's straight. She works so hard. We have seven kids. She had seven kids, and uh, so her having her own house, she never had nothing on her own that she ever owned. So her owning a house and everything's paid off. Nothing she to worry about. Puts a smile on my face. I'm sure she's very proud of you. Thank you. What's the best gift you've ever received? A bike from her. How old were you? I was like nine, ten. And, uh, you know, as a kid, everybody wants a bike, and I never had a bike. And uh, and that was like the best thing that could ever happen to me was getting a bike and I can ride a bike freely. And then I now I don't have to walk to the park. I can ride my bike to the park. So that was it was, like, it was a blessing for me. You know, scale my legs and plus I can try to get back home quicker. So my mom won't take me off the court, you know, because she's like like a lot of mom stories. Her coming with her van, take, run me off the basketball court because she hates when I go to court, especially when she comes from work and I'm not home. She's worried about me. What was your favorite subject in school? Favorite subject in school? <laughs> it was math. It was math. Uh, I had a, it was math. And I, I had this funny uh, uh, Jamaican teacher, his name Mr. O'Connor. Mm -hmm. He was funny and like, it was just a bunch of kids, of bad kids in the class. And he was just like, from the, from the Bahamas, being in the Bahamas and being in, and from Jamaica, he had a strong accent. And when he got mad at us, he always just shouted at us. And like we always try to get him to shout at us, and like when he shouted, he knows to play basketball. And when he shouted at us, he's like the whole crowd just get loud and start laughing because the action was so strong. And we used to pick on him all the time. But you know, in this, one of these things, I need to go see him when I go back home. I never get to see him because he's one of my favorite teachers because he always looked out for me as a student. You know, and uh, some of those teachers we always forget they always look out for you, even though he was funny. He's he made the class fun and he made it learning fun buzz. We all have teachers like that. He will Thanks. be excited to see you. You have to go see Actually, him. Actually, I have to see him. I, I, I don't know if he's back in Jamaica or he's back in the Bahamas, but if you re listen to this boss, I still love you. What was your least favorite subject in school? Oh my gosh, it's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, I, take, I, I think I took, I think that's what that, I think physics. Okay. It was hard, man. It was very it's hard. A tough one. It was hard. I, I can never, like, sometimes you think you get it, and then after that, you don't get it. I was just never could get the numbers with a C and, like, the, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, it was just, you know what I'm talking about. Physics is hard. Yeah. Like, yeah, so much equations. Like, I, I couldn't. It's tough. I was, I was not good at physics. I was, okay. it, was, it was hard for me. It's okay. All right. Rapid fire round. Okay. Quick answers. Favorite superhero? Great question. Great question. Favorite superhero? You know, I always love all of them because they always had a unique story. This but is not rapid. I know. But it's so hard because I... You I'm, had to pick one. Captain America. Captain America. No, you, Black Panther. Right, Vanya. 
Okay. If you didn't play basketball, you'd play? I'd be a DJ. That's crazy because my next question is, what would your DJ name be? DJ I'm not kidding. That's literally the next question. Really? DJ yes. Buddy Fresh. DJ Buddy Fresh. Yeah. Who's the vet that made the biggest impact on you as a young player? Vet that made the... I had a couple of them. I had Zach Randolph, Garrett Temple. Garrett Temple was annoying, by the way, at first when I met him. But he, it made sense. But he was, he was one of the... And uh, James Johnson. Favorite place to visit? Bahamas, for sure. Place you've never gone, but you'd love to visit? Egypt. What's your favorite color of Sixers uniform? Navy blue. What's your favorite time of day? Morning. But specifically what time? Eight. Just eight o'clock, eight zero zero? Eight o'clock, okay. seven, seven a.m. Okay, seven a.m. If you had to bring a teammate to an important family dinner, who would you bring with you? Ty uh, Tyrese Maxey. What's your, what do your coaches and teammates call you? Fresh. Fresh. Bu fresh Buddy Buckets. Fresh Buddy Bu Buckets. 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 Thank yeah. you for your time. Thank you.